welcome to Match Day. My name, my name is Vince. Uh, with us today is Rob Cummings. Uh, Rob, can you just say hello so we got audio? Hello. Perfect. Perfect. Um, so thank you all very much for being on. Uh, if any of you ever, well, the, the loyal attendees might notice I have a different background today. The scarf room is gone. Uh, I moved rooms in the house, so this is my new office. But uh, and the, and um, anyway, so uh, welcome. And uh, today we're going to do some of those tactical scenarios that Ian and I usually do. Ian is uh, busy this week uh, during this time frame, so I'm going to ask different people to come on. And Rob Cummings is one that uh, I asked to come on. He's uh, been watching our show pretty much every day, and I know Rob from from a while back. So Rob, thank you again. For coming Thank on you. And notice and let's just real quick just share some of your journey and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to get into uh, the little tactical scenarios sure so i'm presently coaching on the men's side at missouri s t division two program in the great lakes valley conference but my journey actually started um coaching on the women's side um years ago at rockers university when i was doing my mba and then from there, my first head coaching position ever was at St. Joe's College in Rensselaer, Indiana. And that's when I first had the opportunity of meeting Vince and it with ODP. And so from there, I've had a, a journey coaching at the NAIA level and, and coaching at Division Two. And now I'm back here, like I said, in the Midwest. And so along that journey, I've been very fortunate and blessed to, to have been part of four different nationally ranked programs. Um, uh, I've been to two NCAA Final Fours as as a coach, and then an, an NAI program that had nine players when I left that were starting nine that won the national title for Bethel, you know, in their first national title. So as a coach, that was rewarding to see players that that stuck yeah. around to have that. So I'm just excited to be here. I'm going to do my best to fill the shoes of Ian. That's going to be <laughs> tough. I don't know if I can do that, but I'll do my best. So thank you for having me. No, oh, thank you. Well, you got hair, so you're already uh, doing well. <laughs> No, well, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I mean, you coached a men and women's program at St. Joe Rensselaer. How was that experience? Because I remember that's when we met. Yes. Um, an experience I, I wouldn't change for the world because it, it was a first it, it was a first eye opener in terms of being able to manage time. If you couldn't manage time, you, you were going to be in trouble. And so as a young coach coming in, and that was my first coaching position, it, it was it was tough uh, initially. But to be honest, the toughest adjustment was <clears throat> the highs and lows of playing games. Yeah. So whichever team played first, they won. You're, you're on a high, but you had to calm down to get ready for the second game. So I always tell everybody, <laughs> either the game, either the day was going to go very good with two two wins, or you're going to have an average day, a win and a loss, or you're going to be very angry because two losses. So the emotional roller coaster. But I wouldn't trade it for the world because each program. You know, brought something different, challenged me in different ways. And, I mean, I, like I said, I'm a better coach for it for each player that was part of that, uh, both programs at the time there. So I really enjoyed it. Well, no, yeah, thank you. And now, you know, the program no longer exists at St. Joe, which is sad. Um, yes. Yeah, you know, but, uh, no, I remember, you know, you helped out in ODP and you did regional stuff and all that. It was great. So thank you again for being on. So I'm just going to show my slides uh, for those that are on the other end and uh, all those on the other end, just if you don't mind, just use the chat box to type in your answers. So what I'm going to do is show some tactical scenarios. There are no wrong answers. Um, there might be, you know, a, maybe a few better than others or one better than, <laughs> than others, but there are no wrong answers. Um, so feel free to just chime in and, and Rob and I would just kind of do this together with there's three scenarios. Today, I thought I'd focus on more defending. Uh, because we've been focused a lot on attacking. So today I thought I would focus more on the other side of the ball. So I'm going to go ahead and start. And Rob's going to help me kind of manage the chat box. So I'm going to go ahead and just start with the first uh, scenario. So give me a second here while I get my whiteboard up. So the player in question is this player here who is a winger. Um, and uh, sorry, let me get a better one. There we go. That player there, they're a winger. Uh, looks like they're defending the ball right now. So the other team, right, they see a two versus one situation and they take advantage of it. So the, the defender has a decision to make, right? Should the defender, uh, after the ball is passed, 
jump back into the passing lane, which would really be one. And my red arrow is wrong. It should be more down in here. Turn and go with the runner. So kind of turn and bump and go with the runner. Or three, just kind of leave it for the right back to deal with. <laughs> so that's poor. So there's no wrong answers. Um, but uh, please feel free to, to uh, put in the box. So hopefully uh, we'll get some interaction here, Coach. And then maybe we'll get your thoughts. So let's see if anybody's uh, participating. Yeah. Anybody participating yet? Not yet. Not yet. Come on, folks. Come on. <laughs> no wrong. Maybe one better. Oh, we got Mr. There. Callum. We got Brian. We got Andrew on again. We got Ryan. We got Brian and Casey Schaefer. Awesome. So, all right. Andrew's putting it out there. He says one. Good. All right. Jump in the passing lane. Casey says, turn and mark the runner. Communicate with the right back to step up. Very good. Excellent. Okay. Um, let's see. Anyone else wants to try? And again, there's no wrong answer. So, I mean, I, I don't know if if my winger decided to just say, all right, right back, you deal with it. I'm going to have to think about the right back, that player, but uh, – <laughs> but for the most part, um, yeah, there are no wrong answers. So we'll just give a few more, a few more minutes here. And it's interesting. I think it's it's a honestly for me, it comes down as a philosophy. Um, and I'll get to that here in a minute. So, all right, Coach Cummings, why don't you go ahead and just give your insight? Well, when I when I look at this, like I said, there's there's different scenarios that come into play. So as we see right here the right back doesn't have anyone to occupy. Right. So when you look at this, you, you could possibly have where all of a sudden the, the, the two, you know, steps into the pass lane, drops in the pass lane, and then the, the right back could slide over and pick up the, the overlap yep. runner, um, which yep. then everybody would shift over to the right. So yep. when I look, when I look at this again, knowing the quality, I, I, I could say three. Now the, the problem you have with, one just jumping into the passing lane is that that's good, but then you have to what is every, what's a domino effect with with everything kind of just mm -hmm. dropping into there? Um, you know, you yeah. take that runner, but is anybody falling? So I, to me, this scenario, being the right back doesn't have anybody, and there's nobody really in front of them other than the one. I would say three, leave it for the right back. Therefore, that right winger can you know step in and uh, occupy um, the person in the middle than that passing lane. Very good. Yeah. No, again, that's why I kind of put that area blank when I made the diagram. Um, so there's two thoughts. So I, was, I remember listening to Shellis Hyman at our, one of our conventions one time, and he was with the, he was with FC Dallas at the time. And he was actually doing a session on pressure and cover with FC Dallas. It was fascinating. And I remember him saying one, a couple of things, two things. When you're when you're pressing the ball and it's a short pass, you, he wants he wanted his players to jump into the passing lane, so it's a short pass. When it was a long pass, he so that would be Andrew, right? Andrew says one. Um, if it's a longer pass, he wanted his players to to kind of bump and run, if you will, turn and almost put your back to the ball and go with the runner. And his rationale was you can run faster. Run, right, running forward, facing forward, then you can pack backpedaling, which made total sense, and it's a longer pass. But I put this in here for three because three is okay too because maybe if this player gets it back, you know, and there's really no one here, so this this center back can, can provide cover as well. So there's real no way. I think it's a philosophy. Like I know Indiana University, they used to always like – it was never jump in the passing lane. It was always bump and turn and go with the runner. Always. Short pass, whatever. It didn't matter. You turn, you bump the player that just released the ball, and then you turn and go. Um, now, I don't know if that's changed uh, since, uh, you know, Todd is there, but uh, that was always the, the case. So, all right. So let's go ahead and we'll move on to the next one. Um, so the next one is, oh, yeah. This player, uh, let me get to you. So it's the left back. So the left back has a decision to make. And you can see here the ball has been played up. And now this player here has quite a bit of space, right? Look at that. It's, it's almost like they were caught out of balance. 
So now the left back has a decision. Should they choose one, force, right, kind of bend their run and force this player down the line, or just approach straight ahead, right, or stay, right, just kind of delay, if you will, not really stay, but delay. So uh, for those that are in the chat box, go ahead and uh, give it a shot. Again, no wrong answers. See if we get anybody. Yeah, it's Monday. People all saying. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, you know what? And, and things are starting to open up, I think, yep. which is great. Um, Casey says four outside. Yeah. Good. Good. Uh, we might have lost some people. Uh oh. <laughs> That's all right. That's okay. I'm used to it. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yep. So Andrew says to force outside to prevent the pass to the center midfielder. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. Because you don't want that ball going. That's another reason. I think I put that player there. It's like a 10. Yeah. Good. Good. So uh, your thoughts, Rob? Looks like we got Andrew and Casey again. Yeah. So absolutely one. I mean, is you know, is, is a great choice forced into the outside. Yeah. Though so looking at the scenario, the only reason why I – I would probably lean more towards three would be for the simple mm -hmm. reason for if I didn't time my run and I forced them out and they turned me, yeah. then it's wide open land for them to slide. And so now I would be asking my, my left center back to have to slide over. Now you have the 10 run into space and yep. th there yep. could be confusion. So why I would lean towards stay in this position is where they're receiving the ball on their end of the half still they're, they're in a moment of where they're not going to hurt me. And I also yeah. have to pay attention to this 10 right in here doesn't have the ball in free. And so I, I look at it, I would stay and make them have to come to me rather than all of a sudden risking. And if I didn't time it, they turn me and now I'm, I'm, I'm playing the chasing game in the chaos. So I would say three based on where they're receiving the ball, you know, yep. the player and the fact that 10 doesn't have any defenders on them that I would want to stay so I could, I could take that pass in the way and to shrink the field. No, it's good. It's like I said, there's no wrong answers. Um, no, <clears throat> I think it depends on a few X factors that we don't know. Right. Number one, what's the score? Number yeah. two, what's this player's pace, right? This yeah. player, right. I mean, can they burn or are they like not real fast? So um, I think there's a lot of qualities that we don't quite know. Um, and, you know, is this three, is this three a left back because they're really good getting forward in the attack or are they a really good marker, right? I mean, so, or are you, now you can't have both, right? You can have a player sure. that's really a good, a good marker, good winner of the ball, but also can get forward. But sometimes you have a kid that you put on the outside as a back because they just love, right, getting forward and you need someone to get forward to create overloads. Um, so on the attacking side. So, yeah, I, I threw this in there because I think sometimes um, – yeah, and two for me, I just put in there because sometimes maybe we just approach them straight on and see where they go. But the only problem with that is we know, right, the ball can go right into there and now we're in trouble, right? And it's so, almost the same situation mm -hmm. that we had on this side. So, Vince, so one yeah. thing also that's not part of this, but, you, I mean, again, we wouldn't know until it's played out – is right. we have the player that's up, that's actually in between the outside back and center mid, not knowing what would he, how would he react to it. So would yeah. he, the, the, the player that's on our, the attack in third, would he actually dip in, take passing lanes away, or would he actually yeah. try to win the ball back? So, again, based yeah. on his reaction, wait, maybe yeah. the decision-making for the left back, because if he goes, and maybe he does stay, but if he yeah. drops in and starts taking passing lanes, then maybe that left back could go out there and be a risk because he's got support. So it's interesting to see what his reaction would be would dictate a lot of what we could and couldn't do. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, excellent. And Casey, you know, says, you know, really likes your reasoning and explanation. Awesome. Um, yeah. Like I said, no wrong answers. Uh, but these are scenarios that, you know, as a high school coach, boy, I remember watching the films. I'm like, Oh, we got to figure that <laughs> one out, you know? Yeah. And uh, yeah. so uh, let's go on to the next one. This is the last one. And then we'll call today. So um, here's the situation. So the ball is zipped, 
right? So that that that's a key word. <laughs> <laughs> really fast, not slow. So I'm going to, I'm going to give you a little X factor in there. Um, and we're on field turf. So it's even going to go faster. So uh, the ball is played to this center back. So should this, uh, this nine, should they cut off the other center back, depending on where everyone is kind of float towards the ball and see if they can make play a little bit predictable or, drop back here and just kind of secure the middle so this player doesn't get the ball or kind of be a screen. Um, so there's a lot of little things in here, you know, like, for example, this player can go right there, right? So that's a problem. Um, so it's a lot of little scenarios that little situations that you have to try and fix. So everyone on the chat, one, two, or three, you know, and then and I find out that the nines don't like to defend, but that's okay. You want, you, want, <laughs> you know, you want a player that doesn't want to exert a lot of energy defending, um, you know, as a nine. But but yeah. they are super important. So, Ryan threw it out there. Said three, drop and secure the middle. Let's see if Casey and Andrew come back on. Maybe they're thinking. come on, Casey Andrew. <laughs> Yeah, three. Ah, uh, Casey says three. Drop back and secure the middle. Yeah, very good. And let's see if uh, we can get Andrew in here. And Andrew, three. Three. well, all it's right, effect, uh, three for three. Um, so, Coach Cummings, what do you think? Your thoughts? I I would say looking at the positioning because you know a lot of times when we you know we play four three three, we'll ask you know the nine to s try to split. The two yep. center backs, that's a role as other ones take the outside backs. But in this scenario, the yeah. nine is already kind of dropped back. So really, he, you know, it would defeat the purpose and he'd create a lot of open space for that player to dribble into if you try to step in and split. So I like the fact of dropping in because, again, yeah. we want to try to make the game more predictable for our defenders. So I feel if he drops yeah. in and starts taking passing lanes away, then it allows us to, to be able to defend in a, in a in a better area rather than all of a sudden allowing them to change the point of attack. So I like three. I would drop in, take the passing lanes, because if you look, you have your winger out there that could address the outside back. Then you have yeah. an, another yeah. winger here that's addressing. So I think we're addressing all the passing lanes um, away. Yep. So I like yep. three a lot. Agree, agree. Sorry, my dogs are barking. Um <laughs> I think uh, maybe the FedEx man's here. Um, but, uh, yeah, I remember when I when I uh, taught the B license with Jeff Pill, who I did my B license with him as a, as a candidate and my A, and then I worked with him. And we had a scenario like this and in training, and he told, the, he told him exactly what you, Casey, Andrew, and Ryan, I think, are basically saying, if you can't win the ball, if you know for sure you can't win it or influence it, then just simply drop back and secure the middle, right? Just drop back and secure the middle. We give them this, right? We give them all this space in here, but don't let them get down the middle and secure the middle. So drop and get deep. So, um, yeah, very, very good. And then, uh, um, yeah, like I said, though, I mean, obviously it depends on where these players are. So as a coach – you really got to get these players to communicate with the nine a lot, right? And to help uh, she or he out, right when they're, right when they're going. So these players, we got to get players to talk to the lines in front and behind, right? If we can do that, then we don't have to yell and scream as much. So, um, Coach Cummings, thank you so much. I'm going to go ahead and stop the slideshow. Yep. And for those that are on the other end, please just email me. And uh, uh, let's see, get rid of that. There we go. Very good. Coach, thank you so much. Just email me uh, for everybody who wants to. Um, uh, oh, Andrew threw in the last little point. Sorry, Andrew. It must be delayed. Uh, yeah, the 11 does tuck in. Two is an, yes, two is the option. Then nine could steer. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, so, and Vince, one last thing, you know, on that one that go with Andrew is, you know, something that could come into play is if you look at the center back, is he left-footed? I think if you look at that, will also dictate a lot of what the other players do, whether they drop or not. Because if it's a left footer that has the ability to maybe drop a longer pass, or if it's somebody just yeah. pure right, that can maybe change a little bit of how we approach that defending as well. Yes. Yeah. No. Agreed. So for all those that are on the other line, again, if 
All you have to do is email me. I've been getting a lot of emails asking for the decks, right? Because they share them with their players and that's wonderful. So more than happy to share and um, throw in those X factors like, like we just did to your players and see what they come up with. So those what if scenarios. So thank you all so much, Rob. Thank you so much. I'll see you late, hopefully later at four. Yep. Thank you. Four Eastern time, three year time. Fantastic. Um, thank you for having me. Then, yeah, no. And then for those that are coming on, Later, uh, we're going to do some activities to consider for, you know, uh, now we're getting back to return to play. I'm going to throw out some more activities to consider. So. And Rob, if you got a few, let's share those as well. Sure. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Thank Rob. Thank you, everyone. See you later.